This meeting is being recorded. Good afternoon. On behalf of the University of California, thank you for tuning in for the UC Career Webinar. Today's exciting webinar will focus on tips for career fair success and networking strategies. My name is Katie Ward, and I serve as the Director of Outreach and Engagement for the University of California Office of the President. Today's program is part of a UC-wide effort to unite and support alumni across our 10 campuses. We aim to equip you with the information, insights, and connections necessary to launch, grow, or expand your career. After today's event, I hope you will follow the survey link to provide feedback on today's session. We're excited to hear your thoughts and ideas on what we can do to help support you in your career and professional development. Throughout the session today, you'll have an opportunity to ask questions of our speaker by clicking on the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen or by emailing alumni at ucop.edu. We will try and answer as many questions as possible during the event. I'd now like to introduce our fantastic speaker, UC Berkeley alumnus, Tim Johnston. Tim's background spans uh, more than 30 years of experience in corporate staffing and career management and coaching. His sector and industry experience span high tech, manufacturing, biotech, retail, consumer packaged goods, financial services, and professional services. Before launching Wayfinders, Tim served as the Vice President of Client Services at TMS Consulting, an outplace and human resource consulting company in Northern California, and also as founding member of Career Partners International. Tim is widely regarded for his expertise in recruiting and career management, as well as, knowledge, as his knowledge of social media ecosystem and how it applies to job search campaigns. He has been a featured speaker and workshop leader at professional conferences and has received numerous national and regional awards recognizing his contributions to the profession. Tim, we are so excited that you're here with us today. Please take it away. Did, did, I, did I actually write all that stuff? And did I actually do all that stuff? Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's session. I'm very pleased to be here with you today. Thank you so much for the introduction and the opportunity to uh, present some of my, my thoughts and counsel and guidance on optimizing your success at this upcoming career fair on May 2nd in South San Francisco. So away we go. Um, a little bit of the agenda just to recap, and Katie's already talked to you a little bit about how to um, uh, submit your questions. We'll take them uh, at the end, uh, unless Katie uh, believes it's, it's important for me to answer the question on the fly. So what's my deal? Just a little bit about me. Katie's already covered a lot of that. We're going to talk about career fair prep and how to, again, prepare yourself to make as positive an impression as possible, but also gain the information you need to make some informed decisions about how to proceed forward with your career journey. We're also going to talk about uh, the ever favorite question, tell me about yourself. You hear it in interviews, you hear it um, at network building uh, sessions, you hear it everywhere. So Katie, tell me a little bit about yourself. And it tends sometimes to freeze people up, but there's ways to address it, and we're gonna talk about that today. And then also the power of network building. Um, not networking, network building, and leveraging the collective intelligence and generosity of those individuals directly or indirectly uh, connected to you, and, and really how to, to leverage that in uh, your search campaign. And that's really what it is. It's a campaign and it's a search campaign to be of service. So we have a lot to cover um, in a relatively short period of time. So let's get moving on this. So what's my deal? Um, well, I am a Cal Bear in 1975. My wife is a Cal Bear. Our oldest daughter is a Cal Bear. Our youngest daughter is a Cal Aggie. So a UC Davis Aggie. So we are lifelong bears and Aggies and members of the UC ecosystem. Um, my career, almost 40 years of it now, has been spent in one of two things, either directing teams and organizations and identifying and acquiring really talented people or working with really talented people like yourselves in assisting you in becoming the most identifiable, qualifiable, and acquirable resource of choice for your employer of choice. So those are my two paths in almost 40 years 
of my work life, either assisting people or assisting organizations make the connection. And that's that's uh, the perspective I bring to today's session. I also got a couple other things to to talk with you about early on in this in this presentation. It's going to feel a little different this this whole delivery because it's very visually intense and not textually intense. So keep that in mind. But a couple of principles that over the course of my career uh, I found is helpful to the people I've supported either at Wayfinders or elsewhere. So first things first. Um, I am a big believer in perspective. And if you change the way you look at things, as Dr. Dyer says, the things you look at change. And people tend to get wrapped up in context about, well, I'm an unemployed job seeker looking for work. I'm a recent graduate looking for work. I've been recently um, impacted by a reduction in force. I'm re-entering the workforce. I thought I was going to retire. Now I need to re-enter the workforce. So I've taken some time off to address some other issues and, and, and obligations. Now I want to get back in. And, but it's always about, almost a linear process. If you change the way you look at this, I think you're going to find it's much more energizing and, and challenging and intellectually stimulating than you might have thought. So let me just kind of continue on that. Help one inside, you see them all the time. What is this? It's a lot more than a sign. What is it? Any ideas? Maybe not. Um, what it is, it's a cry for help. It's a cry for help coming from the, the, the mouth of a very specific individual located within the, the, the walls of a very specific organization who once again today woke up with pain, need, or opportunity that's not being addressed, that is causing him or her, and by extension, his or her team, discomfort. Typically, when they start to experience that pain, generally, they'll go to their human resources department saying, I'm going to have to open a wreck to fill this role. But what gets lost in the translation is the pain, the need, or the opportunity, and the cry for help that the manager wants to project to the market. So these are cries for help. And you represent the solution to that cry for help. So you're not looking for a job. Because you don't need me or anyone else to find a job. You could find a job this afternoon doing something. You are a solution in search of pain, need, or opportunity to address. When I work with my clients, I always encourage them to say, the last thing I want to hear from you is that I apply to five jobs today. Because applying to jobs does nothing more than, than make you a supplicant to a set of processes or conditions over which you have limited control. Application equals supplication. Okay? I want you to feel like you're in much more control of this situation than you would otherwise feel. So you are a solution in search of pain, need, or opportunity to address. In other words, this isn't a campaign to find a job. It's a campaign to be of service. To my view, that's a lot more stimulating and a lot more energizing than I'm looking for work or I'm looking for a job. Does that make sense? From now on, I haven't identified another job I'm going to apply to. I've identified a need that appears to exist for which I am confident I represent the solution. Now my task is to determine how many different ways I can gain the undivided attention of the person who woke up against again this morning looking for help and experiencing the discomfort. Does that make sense? Does it help? Because I think if you change the perspective here, it's not about what the company can do for you, deem you worthy of consideration. It's what you can do for the company address the set of circumstances that has caused them discomfort and identifying the person. So application equals supplication. And it really is all in the approach. There is no magic formula for this. 
It's all in the approach. And I like to, to use the approach of puzzle solving because once again, if you, if you address this campaign to be of service as nothing more than a series of puzzles to be solved, you activate your thinking, your lateral thinking, your nonlinear thinking. Puzzle solving is a lot more stimulation than looking for work. People love to solve puzzles. They hate to look for work. Change the lens. You change the perspective. You change the energy. Okay, so we're here really now. So those are some of my, my initial thoughts. And that, that mindset is so huge in this process. So huge that you get an energized, stimulating mindset rather than tedious, here I go again, looking for an opportunity, an opportunity to be of service. How many opportunities have you written or identified that you wish to express your interest in? Okay. One of those opportunities, or, or we have an opportunity before us here on May 2nd, to meet with employers directly to learn what their names are. So you want to be mindful and plan this. Preparation is key in this entire process. So we want to plan this work, plan this, this event. Um, it's helpful, I think, to, to consider why you're attending the event <clears throat> and why the employer is attending the event. The, I think, Katie, the last time I looked was 57 employers. As of earlier today was my count. 57 employers who will be, at least at this point, participating in the event. Why are they there? Well, they're there because some of the managers inside the organization, through their staffing or whoever, have determined that there are, there are needs that are not being addressed. They are seeking to establish some visibility, some connectivity, and some accessibility to potential solutions. You, as the solution, are attempting to achieve the same thing. Visibility, connectivity, and accessibility to the one and only one person at the end of the day that matters most. Who might that be? The hiring manager, never forget, Companies don't employ people. Recruiters don't hire people. People hire people. The convergence in this career fair, it's it's 100%. You're there to, as best you can, establish visibility, connectivity, and accessibility to prospective employers who either have an immediate or anticipated need or needs for someone with your talent and capability. They are there to establish visibility and connectivity with possible qualified solutions. It's a perfect convergence because you're all trying to achieve the same goal. All right, you want to start with the roadmap. So again, this is the preparation piece. And yes, there's a lot to do in preparing um, for, for this campaign and actually executing your, your campaign. It's helpful to know myself to spend some time before you walk into that building taking stock and assessing who am I? What is it that I am presenting to these potential employers? What's the value package? Right? So self-assessment, reflection, assessment, documenting what, who and what you are. What's your situation? Are you gainfully employed considering options? Are you unemployed or in transition between successes? Are you re-entering the workforce? Have you recently graduated from UCI or UC San Diego or Santa Barbara or Merced and are seeking your first or second professional role? Being able to determine, to articulate what your current situation is is one of the key messages you're gonna be sharing in your interaction with the representatives or the event. Who and what are you within the context of work? Many of you, based on the demographics I've seen, are mid to later stage of your career. Many of you are midstream in your career. A number of you are early stage in your career. But within the context of your work, who and what are you? What is your positioning? What roles do you play? What value do you add? based on your, your evolution to date in your work life. Who and what am I? 
in the context of work, and if you wish, outside of work. What do I offer? I like to, to, to characterize this in seven domains of value. Again, all this is designed to assist you in presenting a clear, comprehensive, yet compelling value proposition to the people you're going to be interacting with. Seven domains of value, specific areas of technical expertise, knowledge, functional, functional skills, innate abilities, personal, personal traits and characteristics, attitudes that are values driven, attitudes you have about your work, about interactions with colleagues, attitudes about the product, service, or technologies, the behaviors those attitudes generate, and the accumulated wisdom you've developed over the course of your career to date that enables you to quickly thin slice the situation and determine what is it? You know, what is it about this situation? And how do I utilize and incorporate my knowledge, my skills, my ability? People tend to focus on the knowledge, skills, and abilities. They lose sight of the importance, sorry about that, the importance of personal traits, attitudes, behavior, and wisdom. All of these come into play in what you're positioning and presenting to a prospective employer at a career fair in an interview. What is my offering? What are the value propositions? It's one thing to be able to state that. It's another thing to be able to state it and substantiate it with examples. I know in your, your session earlier this week, you probably had an opportunity to learn more about how to develop an effective resume. Effective resumes are really about results, being able to substantiate the claims you're making about the value you're offering. So being able to pull stories if in, this, in the conversations you have at the career fair or in an interview. If I claim to possess a certain area of specific domain expertise, do I have stories I can tell to substantiate that claim that are relevant? Right? What do I seek? What is my purpose for being at this event today? I'm seeking a new opportunity. I'm currently employed but seeking a new opportunity. I've recently graduated. I'm later stage in my career. I'm trying to, to define, develop a, a more uh, balanced approach to my work life. I'm seeking. So what is, it, what is it that you seek? What type of role, what type of contribution do you wish to make? Utilizing what set or subset of skills on behalf of what kind of employer? Offering what kind of product, service, or technology to what kind of customer base. You can get that granular, because the more granular you can get, the, e the easier it is for you to pick and choose the messaging you're gonna send to a specific target. It helps to dive deep in this. It really helps to dive deep. As you run up to this event on May 2nd, you've got the list on the website of the employers. Right, so identify your targets. You have, what, we have um, two and a half hours or so in the session. Two and a half hours, three and a, I'm sorry, three and a half hours. Three and a half hours. 57 plus companies there, we don't know how many hundreds of, of individuals. Have a target list. Identify the targets using the roster of employers. Do your research on each of those targets that seem relevant to your needs. Print out the information on those targets. Right? So identify your primary, your secondary, your tertiary targets. Do your research on each one of them. Prep your messaging for each one of them. This is an organization involved in the provision of a consumer packaged good. Your areas of expertise are. How does what I offer relate to that? In the hundreds, if not thousands of career fairs I attended representing employers over the course of my career, nothing is more nauseous than having over and over again to explain what your company does to someone who should have done the research going in. So identify your primary, your secondary, your tertiary targets, do your research on each one, 
practice-specific messaging, you want to ensure that you communicate to the people sitting or standing behind the desk or the table. And if you really want to make an impression, when you jump to the front of the, 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 um, the queue, pull out the printed material that, that identifies that company and just kind of flash it a little bit to let them know you've done your homework. Let them know you've done your homework and that you're not just fishing. Okay? So that's the run up. It's doing your research, taking stock, developing your, your key messaging, identifying the targets. Then we want to work our plan. We want to work that plan that day. So checklist before you get off and get over there. Make sure resumes, you have enough resumes to cover at least the number of companies you're targeting plus another 10 or more. Don't run out. If you haven't done it, consider creating using either Vistaprint or, or perhaps um, uh, FedEx Kinko's personalized business cards. Ensure that your LinkedIn profile is up to date and compelling. Thing. Your LinkedIn profile is as important, and in some degrees, to my view, more important than your resume because it's a much more personalized presentation of your skills. So make sure your resume is in order and include your LinkedIn profile URL, business cards, personal business cards, name, contact information on the front, maybe your tagline on the back, or areas of core expertise. LinkedIn profile. Think about the timing. What's the, you know, what is the timing of this? 11 to 2.30. When am I my most energized? Am I a morning person, a midday person, an afternoon person? What's the, what's the dress code? What's the recommended dress code? Well, it can vary. And I know that, that sounds a little weird. Are you telling me to have a couple of different wardrobe changes? Not necessarily. But if you're a software engineer or an engineer, it's likely that the people you're going to be talking to are going to be dressed down a little bit. So you, you want to kind of tune, you want, if, you, if you desire, create a wardrobe for the day that enables you to dress, pick it up a notch or take it down a notch, depending on who you're talking with, like sport coat or slacks. Something that you can kick up and, 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 or, or tone down based on who you're talking to. You want to resonate. Bring enough food and water to keep you energized over the course of this time and always bring a firm handshake and a smile. All right. So tell me about yourself. We're going to talk about that in a couple of minutes. Be ready with your script, with your, your messaging, your key talk points. Tell me a little bit about why it is that you're sitting across from me today interested in being of service to our organization. Have the information on your target companies, primary, secondary, tertiary, the printouts of that information, the key messages for each. If I only need one message with them, what is it about my capability? And we're going to take that up in the team A in a minute. And a strong close, thanking them for their time, asking permission to follow up, and reminding them of one or two of the key points you hope they remember about you or desire, you hope that they will recall that will generate the rest of the story. Right? When you get there, when you first arrive at the venue, lurk a little bit, hover around, and trap off of some of what you're observing. For instance, go up, you know, before you go meet with your, your absolute target, highest target company, Lurk a little bit around the table. Hover up by the front. See if you can grab the name of the pe the names of the people behind the table. Then step away or, or hang around for a minute or two, and, and just kind of get a sense of how the people are interacting, how the people behind the table are greeting the attendees, what kind of questions they're they're fielding, what kind of questions are being asked, what seems to resonate with them and then replicate the positives and avoid the negatives. If you are able to grab the names of the people, 
before you step up, get your phone out, go on to LinkedIn, find them, and do a little research on who they are and the roles they may be playing at the company. The more you can level the playing field, the better. So lurk a little bit, hover a little bit, draft off of what you're seeing as being very positive and resonant with people, <clears throat> and avoid the negatives. And get comfortable with the setting. Right? Then hit your targets. Have a game plan. Primary targets are the ones I'm going to hit first. Or if you feel more comfortable with tertiary targets, not as high value, start with them. Get your feet wet before you hit your primaries. Just depends on how comfortable you are walking into it. If I want to get my legs a little bit, I might start with a tertiary company and wait for the real high value ones later when I'm really in the mood, when I'm really in the zone. So hit those targets. Be insatiably curious. Have your questions ready. Nothing, nothing again, is more tedious for someone sitting at a table to, to have to prompt people for questions. What can I tell you? Have your questions ready that are specific to that company, the roles you're interested in. Right? Lots of questions. Right? There are no strangers here, only friends you haven't yet met. While you're waiting in line, do, do something these people aren't doing, talking to each other. Finding out and determining why they're there, what other companies they've talked to already, what they've learned, where they went, what campus they attended, what their backgrounds are. There are no strangers, only friends you've not yet met, and potential nodes on your network. Right? Don't waste time in line. Get that phone out, look for the people that are behind the desk, see if we can determine a little bit more about them. Talk up the people in line. Why are they there? What have they done so far? What's been their experience? What are they seeking? What kind of roles are they seeking? <clears throat> okay. Have something to take notes on. Capture names. Create action items. Reflect. Ask for permission to follow up. Ask for permission or ask for the appropriate way to follow up. Thanks so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. I know you're going to be talking to a lot of people. You know, uh, is there a specific way I should follow up with you or someone else in the organization? I'm going to capture those notes, those names, and create your action items before you leave the building. <clears throat> Excuse me. Following up. Um, this is a, um, a message I send to everyone. I talk with and work with. Don't bother expressing your interest in an opportunity to be of service that you don't intend to follow up with. And it's a waste of your time. If it isn't genuinely a role in which you have a strong desire to make a contribution, don't waste your time. But once you've identified compelling cries for help in which you are motivated to express your interest and do everything you can <clears throat> to capture the attention of the hiring manager. Then you go all in. Okay, so plan your, plan your work, work your plan, get your action items to follow up, and follow up. And beware the black hole. Yes, we are in, in a new age when we've identified and seen an actual black hole. But avoid the black hole called the resume database. The last thing you want is that document called your resume just residing in the bits and bytes bin of a resume database. We're going to try and do everything we can, not only at this event, but in the course of the rest of your campaign to be of service, to avoid the black hole, make it impossible for that document to reside somewhere in the bits and bytes bin. And that's just being proactive in your follow-up, being very proactive in the follow-up. Tell me about yourself. It's a great question. It's, it's, it, and people get really kind of jittery or, or wrapped around the axle about the question. To me, it's a great question because it gives you, the individual, an opportunity to guide 
the listener exactly where you want them to go and to land about who you are, what you offer, what you can do, and what makes you unique. Tell me about yourself is probably one of the best questions you can ever be asked because it puts you in the driver's seat. It's control. You get to control the messaging. So you only got 30, maybe 45 seconds, maybe a minute. At this event, you're not going to have probably more than 30 to 45 seconds. To, to tell them what they need to know in order to be able to relate to you and what you potentially represent to the organization. You got about 30 seconds. And the question is, is really when, when I've asked the question during an interview, so Katie, tell me about yourself. What am I really asking? What I'm really asking is, so Katie, tell me how it is that you've evolved to a point in your career where you're sitting or standing across for me right now, convinced and confident that your skills and capabilities are what I need to address these set of circumstances causing me the discomfort. It's why are you standing across from me today? I don't want your life story. Based on the nature of the role or the organization I represent, why is it that we're having this conversation? What is it about what we do, the product, service, or technology? the role that has compelled you to stand before me today. So again, it's not your it's not an autobiography. It's short, sweet, and to the point. How is it that I'm sitting across you? Thanks so much. Let me tell you a little bit about my background and how it is that I've arrived at this table today. Okay. Think about what makes you memorable, remarkable, and relevant. Each of us possesses those, those differentiating traits and characteristics in the context of the work you do, the roles you play, what makes you memorable, remarkable, and relevant. Relevant to the needs of the organization. Think them out, write them out, have stories to substantiate the claims. That's a key piece of your messaging in the tell me about yourself. Because there was a time when I was doing lots of interviews on the East Coast, lots of interviews on the East Coast for the Clorox company in Oakland. And inevitably, one of the last questions I'd ask any of the individuals I was talking with is later on today or this week, I'm going to be flying back to California, somewhere in the middle of Nebraska. I'm going to open up my briefcase and start reviewing my conversations with people like you. What's the one thing you want me to remember about you? 35 thousand feet over Nebraska that will will enable me to recall the rest of our conversation. Ponder that. Because what we're looking for, what we're striving for, is separation, differentiation, and in the process, competitive advantage. Don't give me a scripted narrative. Talk to me in your voice. Thanks so much. I'm glad to have this opportunity. You've been on my radar screen for a while. Let me tell you a little bit about how it is that I've arrived at your at this at this point today talking with you. Started my career at graduate of short, sweet, and to the point. This is a key slide. If you almost if you if you ever if you kind of screen capture one slide, screen capture this slide because it, it permeates everything in your search campaign. If I'm a hiring manager, and I'm sure there's people on this call and on this webinar that have been hiring managers or are hiring managers, so I challenge you on this. If I'm considering you for a solution to the need I have, and I'm interviewing you, I'm having other people interview you, or I'm talking to you at a career fair, there's three things, three questions I'm asking myself. Can this person do the job? Do they possess the technical chops, the capability to do the job and do the job well every day? Are they capable? Will they do the job? Are they motivated? What motivates them? Why are they in this field? Why are they interested in these kinds of challenges? I need to know that I can trust them to overcome whatever hurdles are in the way to get the job done using the skills and abilities they possess. And the third one is, do I possibly think I can tolerate 
their existence in my world every day. Fit. Can do, will do fit. At the end of an interview, at the end of an engagement in a network meeting, if, I'm, if you're talking to someone who potentially has an opportunity, the, last, the three things they need to know is, can this person do the job? Will they do this job? And can I possibly tolerate their existence in my world every day? Preparation for interviews, preparation for career fairs, for a network meeting, an exploratory conversation. Leave them with no doubt in their mind that what you're pursuing you can do, you will do, and that the people that you will be interacting with will enjoy your presence in their world. Be sure to keep it simple and make it easy. Verbosity doesn't matter here. Make it easy for me to quickly understand who you are, what you're offering me, and why I should care. There's going to be a lot of people there on May 2nd. A lot of people, there's going to be a lot of noise in that room. What we're striving for with every, every message sent out is signal, a strong signal tuned to the frequency that your audience is on, and it can vary from employer to employer. So a strong signal tuned to the right frequency, minimizing the noise. Signal frequency noise. And there's going to be a lot of noise that day. You want to separate yourself from that. And that's just planning your approach to each of the people you're talking with. What are the messages? I've learned a little bit more about them by listening in to the conversations of the people just ahead of me. What are the messages? I want to, what are they going to resonate with? How do I separate my messages from the noise of all the others there? That's prep. Maya Angelou, I learned that people are going to forget what you said. They're going to forget what you did, but you're never going to forget how you made them feel. Make them feel like you're, the, you're there to help them. What do you want them to begin to experience? Those people in that room, what do you want them to begin to experience about you? How do you want to make them feel? I'm prepared, I'm focused, I'm committed, I'm capable. How do you want them? Because not a lot of people are going to be as prepared as you are going to be. That's differentiation. Okay, last thing we want to really talk about is your network. It's not networking. Networking has too many negative connotations. Hi, how are you? So glad to meet you. What can you do for me? Your network is everything. The ability to leverage the collective intelligence, generosity, gratitude, and reciprocity that exists in your extended network is key. Right? Everyone you meet possesses information and knowledge, insight, encouragement that you can utilize in your search campaign. It's nothing you need to, to consider doing yourself. Your network is a huge, vast, Receptacle of collective intelligence, generosity, gratitude, and reciprocity. Something you want to leverage every day. Because if you don't ask and you don't give, you will not get. And I will tell you, over the course of 40 years in this business, in one capacity or another, the one hurdle I've had to get more of my clients over than any other is a reticence or an unwillingness to ask for help because it's not built into who we are. We should be able to do this ourselves. All right, you know, this is, you know, I was laid off, I, I need to deal with this myself. I'm shifting careers, this is on me. No, no, no. The more people you enlist in your ever-expanding network to assist you in your puzzle-solving efforts, the better. But you gotta ask and you gotta give. It's as important to give back as it is to receive in this process. That's why we want to leverage everything. It's like puzzle solving. Back to puzzle solving. Here's the deal. If I walk into a Starbucks and put a jigsaw puzzle on the table and start to put it together, what can I reasonably expect is going to happen reasonably fast besides being asked to leave? Someone's going to walk up and say, what are you working on? Well, I'm trying to solve the jigsaw puzzle. Would you like to help? Sure, I love to solve puzzles. 
two of us are working on it. Katie, Katie Ward walks by. There's another person who wants to help. I've got three brains, parallel processing, solutions to this puzzle. What I can reasonably expect to occur is that the puzzle is going to be solved quicker. That's the beauty of leveraging your network, enabling and allowing people to be generous to you and helping them understand how they can be. Because it really is a team effort. I, this, by the way, is a, a scene from the Badwater 130. Five, a race across Death Valley up to Mount Whitney. Um, that person may look like they're walking, they're running alone, but their pursuit vehicles and their support vehicles are right back there. It's a team effort. Allow a team to evolve that can assist you. And similarly, when you're at the career fair, continue to expand your network. You all share a common reason for being there. You're members of the University of California system and community. Build your team out there. And a true genius is always generous with their ideas because they know there are always more brilliant ideas coming to them. If you don't share, you won't get. Choose generosity and reciprocity. It is so much, so powerful in your search campaign. It's as much about what you give and how you support others as what you ask for and what you get in return. Uh, so finally, before we go into um, Q&A, uh, and then I'll be happy to take as many questions for as long as, as we have, Katie. Uh, some final thoughts. Um, and again, this is from over the, gleaned from over the years of my experience. Um, you're going to walk away from the event on the second, feeling like perhaps you hit a lot of, you know, I hit a lot of course with a lot of people, and then you're going to hear silence. Or at, at different stages of your search campaign, things are just going to go silent. Or you're going to express your interest in a role you feel you are absolutely positively a glove fit perfect for. And you're not going to hear a word. The silence can be deafening. What that says to me is it doesn't mean that they're not interested if they don't know you exist yet. you got to help. Do not let the silence dissuade you. Do not let the silence dissuade you. Don't take it personally. Nine out of ten times, it's not personal. It's just the nature of the beast in a lot of organizations. that They're not able to follow up as quickly, or they just don't have the resources. So don't take it personally. Don't take it as a, a one or the other uh, assessment of your capability. It's get it, it's what we're trying for to get an answer, right? It's gremlin territory. Go get yourself a blue and gold, but not a red. Um, fly swatter or some totem to remind you that a lot of what you're gonna experience during this campaign, second guessing yourself, being discouraged, they're all gremlins seeking ways to de-energize you, right? Nine out of 10 times, it's all in your head. Where are the gremlins? Recognize when they're popping up and have a method for, for slamming them down. And be a warrior. This is a growing process. Not only in the career fair, it's just one piece of this, the career fair. It's just the beginning, because once you've identified your targets and once you've established some kind of connectivity, you've got a lot more work to do. Courage, conviction, character, and confidence. Throughout this, you're going to have successes. You're not going to have successes. Maintain the confidence. Maintain your commitment. Now, I'm not here to evangelize you, but I do want to share with you this. Um, there's a wonderful book I use quite a bit in my work called um, Callings is the name of the book, the title of the book, Callings. In the introduction, Greg Lavoy, the author, says the following. The difference any of us are ever going to make in this world can be equated to our casting a stone into the ocean. Science will tell us that when the stone's resting on the ocean floor, the level of the water will have risen, but we'll have no way of measuring it. We must take it entirely on faith. There are going to be times in this process, this campaign to be of service, when you're going to feel exhausted at the end of the day, a week from all the stones you cast into the ocean. You can never lose faith in the fact that every amount of energy you cast 
you, you place into this process is getting you just a wee bit closer to the goal. Never lose faith in yourself. Never lose faith in the outcome. And this, this process, this campaign, the way things are set up, it's really difficult to not begin to question it. But every ounce of energy you're dedicating to this process is getting you just a wee bit closer to your goal. Last thing about LinkedIn, and I, I did want to throw this in kind of as a gift with purchase. We're not here to talk about LinkedIn, but it's important because it's a very key feature on LinkedIn that not everyone is particularly familiar with, but I think it's very appropriate for what we're talking about today, an all-UC career fair. And you're alums of, a, of the most impressive educational institution in the United States and in the world. But how do we leverage LinkedIn to find alums from our school, from other schools in the UC system that may be able to help us? Let me take you there. There is a feature on LinkedIn. And I'm going to take you there now. How many of you, and Katie, you only can see this, I guess, are familiar with the search alumni feature on LinkedIn? It used to be a menu item many years ago. It isn't now. Go to www.linkedin.com, type in alumni, and hit return. And the school that's most recently listed as your most recent institution will show up. I'm an alum of the University of California, Berkeley. Right? I see that there are 300, and LinkedIn just went automatic to get it, 344,715 alums in the LinkedIn community that have mention of University of California, Berkeley. The six filters, where they live, where they live, where they work, what they do, what they studied, what they're skilled at, and how you are connected to them. Now, let's go back. Let's say I'm looking for people in the greater San Francisco Bay Area only. Just shrunk my, my um, population by two thirds. Let's say I'm looking for the people that work at Google in the Bay Area. Just shrunk my, my population even further. Now I want to see what they do. Well, they're in information technology. Let's see them. Information te technology, Google, Bay Area, UC Berkeley. Notice below, and I can see more categories where they're located. Notice below here, thumbnail profiles and how I'm connected. This is a hugely, hugely powerful tool, not only for us in the UC system, but anywhere, to be able to identify others that we share a common trait with, matriculated at the University of California in the UC system finding where they work, what they do, because it gives us an opportunity then to reach out. I source your, your LinkedIn profile online. I see your UC Berkeley alum working in the user experience at Google. Um, here's my situation you go back to. Tell me about yourself, who you are, what you offer, what you seek, how they can help. So that's the only thing I really wanted to talk to you about in terms of um, uh, uh, LinkedIn, but LinkedIn is a very powerful tool. It's just not a tool you use to communicate and connect with people. It's a database, and this tool particularly is a powerful tool. www.linkedin.com forward slash alumni. Six, six filters, and you can, by the way, use Boolean search strings and or not quotes, et cetera, powerful tool. Okay, back to the deck, back to the deck, back to the deck. And questions. Okay, I think we're ready for questions. I, I know I've given you a ton of information. So what questions can I answer for you? 
Wonderful. Well, thank you to all of you who've included your questions in the Q&A box down at the bottom of your screen. Our first question comes from Linnea, who would like to know if she's returning to the workforce uh, and hoping to pivot career fields, what should mm -hmm. she include on her business card for a title or field of expertise? Hmm, good question. Um, well, what, 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 what was your, are your, are, is the, the pivot a huge pivot, a 180 pivot, or a slight pivot? Is she saying? Uh, there was an additional detail there, so if you want to maybe give her a sense of if it's a slight uh, pivot versus a slight pivot. Um, where you're, to my view, in being, Linnea, listing a, a tagline of where you're headed, not where you've been. The direction you're heading in, seeking an opportunity, or perhaps seeking an opportunity, a short seeking opportunities to leverage the in, leverage my expertise in this field. Great. Our next question comes from Marie, who has a question about the tell me about yourself. She'd like to know if it's important to balance the memorable information between job skills and personal traits is one more important than the other. Um, my view, make sure you hit the skills, then go to personal traits and characteristics. Because, and I'm sure there are some recruiters on the call, remember how I've evolved in my career. Um, we as recruiters are sometimes very, we're very, um, we're very narrow in our focus. It's either you either satisfy a need we have or you don't. And the first thing I'm going to look at is your qualifications, your technical qualifications. Whether that's the right way to look at it or not is always up for debate. But make sure you hit on the key technical or key skills that are identified as being um, absolutely required for the role. So start with the skills. Great. Our next question comes from Andrea. Andrea was recently part of a reduction in workforce that made mm -hmm. the news and impacted hundreds. It was not performance-based, so she's wondering about the best way to develop her tell me about yourself pitch that moves the conversation to how she can be part of the solution and add value. Okay, so uh, good question. So as a result of a recent reorganization at company XYZ, my role, as well as the roles of a number of my colleagues were all impacted in a reduction in force. I find myself in transition, seeking a new opportunity to leverage my skills in, da 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 da, -da which is why I wanted to reach out to you today. Does, does that help? That's great. Our next I question. find myself in transition seeking a new opportunity to leverage my skills and capabilities in choose your field or your function. I looked at your website, I see there's three or four means you have for which I believe I can have an impact. Notice how I just said that, not jobs, means you have that I'm confident I can address for you. Remember, if you're seeing a posting anywhere, it's a cry for help. I can't emphasize that enough. And you're expressing your interest in being of service. It's in their best interest to acknowledge your expression, your expression and desire to help. The sooner they find a the solution, the sooner everybody gets back to doing the work they're supposed to be doing, including you. Sorry, that was a riff, but I needed to throw that in. No, very helpful. Our next question comes from Michelle, who's a recent graduate with interest in many fields and is also willing to relocate. How can she convey her openness without sounding ambiguous or lacking specialization? Uh, you don't want to go too broad. Um, so, uh, as a result of, um, I 
recently earned my degree in from UC Merced, UC Irvine, UC San Diego. Notice how I said there, didn't receive my degree or I have a degree from, earned a degree in. I'm focusing my energy on opportunities in one or more of the following fields. I believe my interest in and passion for can be either directly applied or adapted. I know I'm throwing all this stuff out and it seems like it flows really easily, but remember, I do this every day. Based on that, Callie is curious, what's one of the most memorable pitches you've heard and why? <laughs> Good question. It was a cold, snowy day in a Boston hotel. I was interviewing individuals in Boston and, and from schools in the Northeast, and it was my last day, it was my last interview, and I was exhausted, tired, not feeling well, and wondering why the heck I'd flown across the country to go over in three days of interviewing. And then this individual showed up, and he was locked down, um, tuned into what we at Clorox were doing in product management. He presented me with a store check. I said, you, are, you, you have made this trip. And I said, can you help me understand how you prepare for this? He said, Mr. Johnston, I've been preparing for this conversation since the moment I stepped on campus. I will never forget that. It occurred in 1983. He had done so much homework and anticipated the areas which I was going to have um, a specific, specific questions regarding product management, brand management. It was just, it just blew me away. It, it, it just blew me away. The, the preparation and the focus. Okay. Our next question comes from Jane, who would like to know what's the best mode of communication for following up with a recruiter? Should she use email, LinkedIn, or something else? Um, if you're able to, to, to secure the email address and email uh, almost you know, the next day, thanks so much for taking the time at the, the, UC, the All UC Career Fair yesterday. Very much appreciate your time. As we discussed, I wanted to follow up with you, reiterate my interest. Um, I've included another copy of my resume for your record. And you can also find me on LinkedIn. Um, if you're not getting any joy, or you're not hearing back, call the company and ask to speak to the person. Are you kidding me, Tim? Call them? You betcha, call them. Knock on their door. Simply following up on a conversation. Uh, hi, um, my name is Katrina Ward. Just calling to follow up on a conversation I had with one of your staff members the other day, Tim Johnston. Um, we, we discussed a number of things. I just want to follow up with a couple of additional questions. call. Remember, you're, and here's the thing. When you call, when you follow up, what are you doing? And people tend to default into, what, what, you know, what are you doing? Why am I doing this? You're doing them a favor. You're making it easy for them to find you or remember you. They have a need that isn't being addressed. That need is causing discomfort. I'm reaching out to you to remind you that I'm ready, willing, able, incredibly capable, highly motivated, and the best news of all, available immediately to begin to address the set of circumstances <clears throat> that appear to be causing you discomfort. When can we talk? What you're not doing is going, please, 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 please tell me you think I'm worthy of consideration. You're doing them a favor, not the reverse. Make the call. Now, here's one thing I'm going to share, and I'm getting close to time here. But here's one thing I'm going to share. Let's say that, you know, absent the career fair, but you've identified a compelling opportunity, and the, the company has indicated that they wish that you would, they, they ask that you express your interest online. Remember, you're never applying for a job. I'm writing to express my interest in serving as the solution to the need you have. 
That's a message. That's a tone. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I, I read with interest the posting for this job. No, I read with interest the description of the need you have and writing to express my interest in satisfying that need as I'm writing to apply for the job of. Words matter. The subtleties matter a lot. Okay. Katie, I know we're getting close to time. Do we have others? Yeah, no, we uh, have some others, but we'll uh, work on a way to get them their answers. Okay. Um, wanna... before, before, before we forget, I, I just want to mention um, two people. Um, first of all, Katie, for, all, uh, for you know, your collaboration on this and providing us with the opportunity wayfinders to, to do this. Also, to one of the, the people in the audience, Beatrice Saley. I'm going to do a shout out to Beatrice. Why am I going to do a shout out to Beatrice? Because about a week ago, I got an invite on LinkedIn from Beatrice saying she was looking forward to my presentation on the 18th about career fair preparation. And could she please, um, she would very much like to, to um, connect with me. Hey, there's an idea. She did her homework. <clears throat> so Beatrice, well done. High five. Nice job. The other person is Michelle Medina, one of my, my Wayfinders private clients. Thanks so much for your, present, your, your presence today. And I told you I wasn't necessarily going to use your teammate. Okay, Katie. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Tim, and thank you to all of you for joining us today. On behalf of the University of California, it was a pleasure to connect with you virtually. We know you are busy and appreciate you making time to be part of today's event. Please make sure to take a few minutes to provide feedback on today's session by following the survey link, which appeared when you launched the webinar. A follow-up message will be sent out shortly and will also include this link. I'd like to thank Tim for his time, generosity, and commitment to the University of California. The tips, invites, in, uh, insights, and advice you shared today make me especially proud to be part of you. I, 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 I could speak for hours, but you know I won't. Well, we really appreciate it. Thank you so much to all of you for joining us today, and we hope you enjoy. Thank you, everybody. Go Bears, go Anteaters, go Highlanders, go Tritons, go Gauchos, go Slugs, go Bobcats, go Bruins, go Aggies, go Bears. Wonderful. Thank you all. Yeah.